Welcome to our short video on spatial reasoning. This video explores what children under three can be doing to help with developing their spatial reasoning. In this video, we are going to share some ideas about what spatial reasoning is, what it looks like and how you might be able to do more of it, whether you are at home or at school. My name is Andrea Lancaster and I'm an early years consultant with an interest in children's early mathematical development. In this short video, I'll explain the importance of spatial reasoning, what it is and how important it is for adults to focus playfully on this aspect in children's first three years. Spatial reasoning, also referred to as spatial thinking or spatial awareness, involves how we understand location. That's where things are positioned and where they are in relation to other things. Dimensions, for example, how long something is or how big something is and the properties of objects, such as spiky or flat. These understandings overlap. So, for example, think about play with a set of stacking cups. Spatial abilities are important for all manner of everyday tasks that we possibly take for granted. Things like judging how much cereal to put in your bowl, getting dressed, understanding directions, or finding your way to work, and so on. Research has shown that children who have strong spatial reasoning skills are more likely to be confident and successful in maths as they get older. And it's not just important for maths. You need spatial skills for other subjects such as art, technology, geography and solving problems. So spatial reasoning skills are something we want all children to develop. However, children from poorer backgrounds may lack experience with spatial resources and toys and this affects their spatial awareness abilities. I'm going to focus on young children's physical and language development and the adult role in providing movement and language-rich environments to support the development of spatial reasoning. First, let's look at physical development. Spatial reasoning is underpinned by intricate connections between the internal and the external information provided by three of the body's sensory systems. The first is the vestibular system, which is a motor sensor system that registers movement of your body. It's critical for understanding how your body moves in space and how we understand balance and awareness of being upright. Have you noticed how young children enjoy spinning or being upside down or maybe tipping their heads back as they're being pushed on a swing, or resting upside down on the sofa. All of this is partly about exploring and developing their vestibular sense. And as adults, we can recognise and support this play, ensuring that we provide plenty of space and time for this type of exploration. So for example, we might allow extra time on a familiar route for them to walk along a specific wall, or to balance on a particular stone, or to crawl under a barrier. If we consider these behaviours and rituals from the child's point of view, they've got both meaning and value. The second sensory system is that of proprioception, or body awareness. If I asked you to close your eyes and touch your nose, it's your sense of proprioception that enables you to know where that part of your body is without looking. Proprioceptor cells found within muscles and tendons and around joints constantly send information to the brain, providing an embodied understanding of the location of parts of the body. So, where's my foot? Where's my shoulder? As well as that understanding of the location of the body in space. So, when a child lays on the floor, or pushes a trolley, or pulls a box across the room, they're activating proprioceptors. And it takes a lot of time and many movement experiences for children to develop a mental body map. And the more active a child is, the more information will be sent to the brain. And because children are constantly growing, that body map has to be constantly updated and refined. So activities and routines like baby massage, nappy times and floor time 
as well as large movement play outdoors and rough and tumble play, they offer ideal opportunities to support the development of proprioception. The third sensory system is the visual system, where young children are developing the ability to focus on near and distant objects, as well as tracking moving objects. In terms of spatial reasoning, this is where static and dynamic understandings of shape and space are supported. For example, sensing the distance between objects. You've probably noticed that children are often fascinated by different viewpoints. For example, bending over and looking from between their legs. Or peeking out from between the slats in a bench. Or climbing to a vantage point. Or being lifted up to see things from a different angle. We can provide for these fascinations by thinking about the environments we provide. So, is there a near or a distant view that children find interesting? Could we facilitate this in a better way? Do we point things out in the distance? Do we allow children time at the top of the slide to just look around them before it's the next child's turn? Much of children's early spatial understanding comes from doing what we call embodied experience. Before they understand the word circle or round or curve, they learn about these ideas by handling everyday objects like balls, apples, large pebbles, tubes and tins. Before understanding the word bumpy, they might experience being joggled in a pushchair over a cobbled path or feeling the texture of a log. One thing that supports children to make connections between their different experiences is contingent talk. Contingent talk is where adults notice what's interesting the child and they name things such as objects, actions and feelings in the moment. Children need to hear words many times before they understand and eventually use those words. So when children are first acquiring language it's repetition and the quantity of adult-child interactions that's important. Research from Rowe in 2012 suggests that the impact of adult-child interactions that takes place now will be seen approximately 12 months later. And then from the age of two to three, extending the breadth and the depth of language is important, as well as the quantity of talk. Rowe also found that exposure to more rare and unusual words at 30 months is a strong predictor of later vocabulary growth. So where and when do we find these rare words? Well, when we're having fun with words, describing our world and enjoying songs, rhymes and stories. Picture books are really useful in supporting under three-year-olds spatial reasoning. And there are some resources that are very useful for developing children's spatial thinking, such as puzzles, shape sorters, nesting or stacking objects, blocks, boxes and cartons. Babies and young children use movement and senses to explore their worlds and communicate their thinking. Spatial reasoning can't develop without strong body awareness and strong awareness of the environment. Spatial learning can be supported in so many everyday play situations and routines and environments that are rich in physical and language opportunities. And that's why young children need such a lot of time to be physically active. And as practitioners, we need to frequently include spatial words like up, under, on top in our everyday interactions with our youngest children. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. This video is brought to you by the Early Childhood Mathematics Group, a group who have expertise in teaching and learning early maths. More details can be found on our free website, www.earlymaths.org, where you can find out more about our spatial reasoning, including our spatial reasoning toolkit and our lovely posters. Thank you. Over and out.